Hello everybody, Jonathan Reeves here. I'm an architect, educator and author. And today I'm going to share with you a very exciting part of content from a webinar that I recently did with Vectorworks on Twin Motion and how amazing Twin Motion is to use with Vectorworks. So if you're a Vectorworks 2022 user, the brilliant news is you now get Twin Motion for free until March 2022. So do snap that up. Let me know if I can help with any training on Vectorworks or Twin Motion or any Vectorworks related stuff at all. So do enjoy the video and I hope uh, you enjoy it very much. Thanks for watching. Bye bye. Now I've been given a nice file by Vectorworks, the Gallery 196 project. And this is a really nice file to do some testing. Uh, the other exciting news is I'm actually testing on my brand new MacBook M1 Pro, which I just literally got last week and now I've got fully set up. So just before we kind of jump into the twin motion side, um, I just really want to kind of go on about the M1 Pro and the ability for it to run back to its files incredibly well so far. And my initial testing has been absolutely amazing and you will see that um, if you follow my channel, I've done a few videos on this already. But you know, check out the speed and the fluidity of things like the Clip Cube, absolutely amazing. Um, and so far, it's been really bulletproof and really, really quiet. So for anybody looking for a new laptop, I think this is the ideal laptop. Um, by all means, have a look at my channel and we'll talk about the tests I've done in a bit more detail. Good, okay, so as you can see, it's a really nice model with quite a decent amount of detail, both uh, externally and inside. And you can see there's sort of quite a lot of fine detail in some of these sort of sculptures and landscape elements as well. Now, just before we kind of go any further, I will just say um, I've put a Heliodon in and you can see immediately the difference the Heliodon makes in the vector its model. So when you're modeling, make sure you put your lighting in a separate layer so that you can turn it on and off. And if you just go up to OpenGL, or shall we say shaded now, as the new version is, just change to high settings and you can enable those shadows and turn them on. Another little tip would be just to pop down to set lighting options and notice the difference that both the brightness makes so you can adjust the overall ambient brightness, but also this little trick ambient occlusion. Now that really brings out the depth you can see in these sort of corner areas and things like that. Ambient occlusion makes a big difference. Um, and what you can see is it doesn't really slow things down at all. I mean, I'm getting a huge rate, frame rate and there's absolutely zero problem at all. Good. Okay, so let's get off and explore this model in twin motion. So all I need to do now with the new Datasmith direct link is go to my visualization palette. You can undock that if you want to. Click on the Datasmith tool. Now you notice that what I've done is actually added that to my workspace as well, just so it's a bit more convenient to access. So the first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is just click onto the options here and decide what preferences in terms of their quality you want to export at. Um, now this generally affects things like the curve resolution. There's not a huge amount of curves apart from maybe these sculptures. But I think to keep the file size a bit smaller, I'll probably go for medium quality, maybe high, um, those two. Rarely do I use low or very high. So it's generally one of those two. Let's go for medium. Now all I need to do is click this single button here, the direct synchronize uh, link button. Click the button and you'll notice that what it will do is export the Datasmith file here. Now this is actually the path of where the Datasmith file ends up. So if you ever want to kind of reopen it or find it independently, this is the path where it goes. Now it doesn't take long to export as you can see. And down here you get a little pop-up telling you the changes have now been made. Okay, good. So now we just launch into Twin Motion. Let's bring up our epic launcher. Now, um, if you don't know much about Twin Motion, it's absolutely incredible software produced by Epic Games. And the great news is at the moment, you can get it for free if you're a 2022 user. So just log into your customer portal and you'll be able to get Twin Motion for absolutely nothing until March 2022. So that's amazing. Previously, it was about $500. Um, so yeah, it really is an absolute fantastic bit of software to snap up. Okay, good. So here we are in uh, Twin Motion. Now, the very first thing you're going to want to do, I'm not going to talk about the interface too much. I do that in my other videos. I'm just going to get straight into it. I'm going to click Import. Now, rather than importing the geometry um, just as a, a lump, which we could do, I'm going to use the new Direct Link button. Okay, and you'll notice that the source of the information is already preloaded in. Um, now, if I did have any of the files here, I could select them, but that's absolutely fine. Go for this option here, if I were you, Keep Hierarchy. 
on the maybe bigger models collapse by material might be a good option for you but i quite like to have access to all the individual um, items in my model so i'm going to go for this one click ok and it will take a second for it to load in the first time just give it a few moments just to load in and there we go we've got something popped in so the very first thing i'm going to do is pop open my side panel here and you'll notice that if you like the whole lump of the vectorworks model has landed in twin motion. So the first thing I'll do is click onto here and just click F on the key um, the keyboard just to kind of fit to my model. Now I've fitted quite a long way out, so let's zoom in. Now you notice that when you're walking in, there's different speeds that you can adjust. And one thing that's quite a useful thing to do is show the navigation palette at the beginning. Um, and this is how you navigate around twin motion. So basically we can adjust the speeds and if I click two, I'll go a bit faster, three or four, I can go really really fast okay great so the next thing we're going to want to do is turn off the starting ground or take state take the starting ground rather and just click and just move it down to um, an appropriate position so you see this arrow here I'm just going to click and move the starting ground just so it kind of drops below my sort of building line if you like that's cool okay great so that's it you can see we're navigating around our model quite nicely now i would suggest when you're actually navigating around you go once you're in closer you definitely want to go slower because it can be quite hard to navigate if you're in fast mode you can see so let's click two to go to a sort of slower mode i can use the mouse wheel as well to navigate in and out as i require so it's already looking pretty good. That's kind of a nice little view here. So I think at this stage, I'm just gonna go ahead and save my project. And let's just save this into my twin motion testing file. Let's just call this gallery project. That will do. Good, okay, so we're all set up, we're saved, and we're ready to explore Twin Motion a bit more detail. I think for now what I'll do is hide this panel here, but do make sure you pop that open uh, when you want to sort of learn how to use Twin Motion. Okay, so probably the very first thing I might want to do is go down to this context tab and go to location. Um, so the background is quite an important thing to change. So if I go to city, uh, that's what we're on at the moment. I can go to sort of none, more of a neutral setting. There's a few other backgrounds in here. Um, I'm not quite sure what the context of this project is. So I think we'll go for, we'll go for some sort of waterfront. That looks pretty cool, just for fun. Now you can always load in sky domes and other things as well, but that's okay, just for this purpose. Okay, um, what we're now going to do is pop open this panel on the side and we're gonna apply some materials. So let's have a look at this. We'll go to materials. Now twin motion ships with a really wide range of materials, as you can see, and these are really, really nice quality. So all I need to do to get some grass is drag and drop, you can see, onto my model and that will basically apply that texture onto that model really, really nicely for me. Okay, I'll do the same with the water in a minute, but I'll just leave that just for now. Um, you'll notice that actually all of the textures from Vectorworks have come through rather nicely. Okay, if you do want to edit them, all you need to do is click on the uh, texture picker, the material picker, or T for the texture tool. Click onto the texture, and sometimes what I do find um, when they come into Twin Motion, they just come in a little bit too light. So I'll just kind of darken them down, get a little bit more um, saturation in them. Let's just see how that sort of pans out, if I kind of darken those. I think I want to keep that fairly bright white, actually, that one. And this grass, maybe I'll just darken that down a little bit as well. Just sort of give it a bit more texture. So it looks a lot better already. And you can see um, that's how you adjust those textures in terms of the, the ones that come in. Or, as I say, let's say we want to replace that something a little bit more grassy which is drag and drop no problem at all okay great um, another nice thing that you can do on the materials is basically select them and do things like reflectivity as well okay so we'll talk about that you can just about see those reflections coming in rather nicely into the model there as well so let's get a little bit of reflection on there just at this stage um, really nice twin motion in terms of the real-time rendering now that's one of the beauties of twin motion the speed and the way you're navigating around and bearing in mind this is all running off my new macbook m1 pro and i've got a brilliant little frame rate here of 25 26. honestly once you get above 20 frames a second it's perfectly viable to work in 
Now, if you do want to adjust the frame rate, then all you need to do is pop into the preferences, pop down here, go to quality, and you can work in um, maybe medium settings. You will get a much, much higher frame rate. So for navigating around while I'm actually working, this is really, really good. And then when I actually want to kind of just look at the quality a bit more, um, I'll just crank it up again. So there's not really much need to work in ultra. Um, I can if I really want to. It's a pretty subtle difference between ultra and high. You can see the frame rates drop down a tiny bit, but honestly, not a problem in terms of working. It's still pretty responsive. So I tend to prefer to work in medium or high generally. So let's go for automatic and it's telling me high is a good result there. Okay, so that's the quality settings sorted. Now, what else can we do? As well as doing a few materials, let's work on our materials a bit more, we'll add some life to this image. That's what I'm really keen to do. I'm gonna pop out my side panel and you'll notice that I've got a trees folder here. And we're gonna have a look at quickly to look through these trees. Now you can slide this right out if you would like to when you're working. By the way, the other nice thing about that is your frame rate increases because um, you're not doing as sort of much screen for your actual viewport. So that's a good little tip actually. Um, you know, you can kind of work side by side like this when you're adding context. Now I'm looking for the American tree. So a nice little tip here is to type in the filter. And if I just type in American, hit return. Because I'm in that library, um, it will filter out the American trees for me. So let's just drag a few of these different types of tree in uh, to the model. And uh, let's just place another one there. Now they've come in quite big, but that isn't a problem um, because what I can easily do with Twin Motion is type in the age and just sort of shrink those down a bit. So quickly select them. Let's just shrink the age down. I love the way that the tree actually changes depending on the actual age of the tree. So it's not just a scaled version of the tree, it's actually a sort of different kind of, it's like a more of a sort of sapling as well, if you like. So I think we'll have a few trees in this position here. Um, what I'd like to do with this one is actually duplicate it. So if I hold down the shift key, I can drag off another copy. And you'll notice it's quite nice, it's actually sort of snapping to the landscape as well. Okay, great. So let's go ahead and do a bit more context. Let's do a similar thing with our bushes. Um, let's grab a few of these. Now what I'm gonna do, is hold shift down and select um, a number of these elements in one go. So there's five of them. Every single time I click, you'll notice that what Twin Motion will now do for me, which is really, really nice, is actually create a slightly sort of randomized size and choose a different variety of those plants. So this is a really great way to very rapidly uh, populate the model with a few different plants and things like that. And all of these can be sort of adjusted and scaled as well. You can see how nice and sort of lush that looks quite rapidly. Excellent. I'll click escape to um, come out of that tool. So already it's looking pretty awesome. Now what I can do to organize my model here is I can use something called a container. Containers are a bit like groups really, or layers. So I'll create a container. I will just drag that up to the top. All I'm going to do is select all of the things that I've just added, all of those trees and things, and drag them into that container. Then I'm gonna right click and rename, and let's just call that trees and veg. So I can basically turn off all the stuff that I've added in Twin Motion just to sort of see how organized I am and so on as well. So using containers is a very important part of my workflow, and that's definitely something I will recommend to you. Okay, we're gonna do a tiny bit more work on the landscape before we move on to adding a bit of life to the image. So we'll go back to the libraries and we'll go to uh, grass and flowers. Now you see a really good sort of sense of grasses and sort of weeds and flowers and things. But what you don't really want to do is kind of be dragging these in one at a time because that can take a long, long time. So to do this, I'll go down to my context brush and I'll go to something wonderful called the vegetation brush. So now what I can do is go to my grass and flowers and I can load in a few different types of grass. Um, let's have a look. I think we want a bit of dry grass in there, maybe some clovers as well. And I can select all of those. And what I can do is get my paintbrush. Now I've got a brush with a variable diameter that I can change. Okay, and it means that I can basically just paint on the surface of my twin motion model. Okay, let's have a look. So let's just move along here a bit. Now you've got to be a bit careful. Sometimes I'm just needing to maybe adjust the brush size a bit more. That's okay so far. Um, don't worry, if you make a mistake, we can do a couple of things which I'm gonna show you. Now, you can see it's very rapid. 
Okay, and that's one of the beauties of using this tool. I don't need to do the whole model, it's just sort of a, a demonstration for you to show how nice that is. But a couple of features that I really, really love are the ability, let's say I want to kind of rub this bit out here. I can basically just rub out uh, this extra little bit here that I didn't really want where the, um, the graph should be a bit more maintained. Now what I can do is turn the entire object on and off to sort of see the difference. Okay, and furthermore, I love this ability to go into click on it and say, well, you know, look, there's a bit too much clover there for my liking. So let's reduce the amount of clovers, see how that looks, and just click off. That looks a lot better. Good. Okay, so let's have a look at the next thing. Um, sometimes when I'm working, I might well turn that off just for a moment, just to avoid the distraction. Okay, so we need to bring this image to life. So the next thing we're going to do is add some characters and people and that will be my next little job. So if I go to the animated humans, um, what you're gonna see is a really nice little library of humans that are totally animated. Okay, so these are very, very cool. Let's just add a few more of those. Um, a single click will add an individual. If you want to, you can drag and drop as well. And each item can be obviously rotated and positioned as required. But each item can be sort of given different poses. So if you really want to, you can kind of have her sat down, for example. Maybe in a minute I'll do that over on the benches or speaking or idling if you really want to, <laughs> just for fun. You can even make them dance. Um, so there we go. I'm having a bit of a boogie as well, just for fun. Good, so there's lots of different things that we can do. Let's just keep them chatting there. So adding individual people one at a time is obviously really, really great for certain interactions. Um, she needs someone to chat to, so let's drag in this lady here, spin around. The other thing that you can do, which is quite fun, is you can change the uh, presets of the clothing as well. So, you know, in big crowds, it just means that you can kind of mix these up a bit as we go. So love the, love the fact you can, you know, change the poses, change the clothing, and that's pretty unique. I mean, you know, you can't, obviously couldn't do this in, in Vectorworks itself. Okay, now, when you want to kind of create something a bit more dramatic, you can go to groups. So groups are basically groups of people that you can drag into your model. And, you know, this is going to really sort of rapidly populate the model with a lot more life. Okay, fantastic. So that's people um, kind of covered. Now, for the odd image where you want uh, people really, really close to you, Okay, what you can do is use um, different type of people called posed. So the posed humans are very, very high quality. Now you can see they're a little bit higher quality than the animated ones. They're not animated for obvious reasons, but these are really, really good choice. You know, when you're wanting to kind of have people like quite close up in the foreground. Um, and maybe what you could do there is sort of hide those guys and just sort of replace them with a few other close up people for this particular image, for example. So it's a good little tip, I'd say. Um, you know, use the appropriate people for the appropriate thing. Uh, the animated people look great, but maybe when you're close up, you want to go for these ones here. Okay, now I really like the look of that image, actually. So what I'm going to do at this stage is just click onto my media doc and click create image. Create image there. Now that stores that image for future use. And the good thing is I can just sort of pan back a bit if I'd like to. If I want to update it, I'll just click update. Okay, great. So what I'm going to do is just click onto more. I'm going to go into format and here I can choose all the different resolutions. I can go right up to 8K if you really want to. And I have to say I've rendered some 8K images and they only take 20, 30 seconds and they look absolutely amazing. Normally though my um, standard would be 4K and that's enough for most people. Another really nice thing that I can do is go to camera settings. Okay, and here we can adjust all sorts of things, but you notice I can adjust things like the vignetting, which is nice. Um, sometimes it looks better off, sometimes on actually. And what I really love is this one, the parallelism. So the ability to just make all those lines completely vertical. And you know, that makes a big difference on CGI, particularly when you're sort of at funny angles and sort of looking up and things, can you see? It makes a huge difference. Um, so let's go back to my image, which I liked. Yep, let's click into more. Let's go to camera and we'll just uh, adjust the parallelism as well. I can also adjust things like the field of view. Okay, so the framing and that obviously will give me a bit less distortion. So that's very easy to do. And finally, I can do depth of field. With depth of field, you then need to really click more and 
set the custom distance here but if you do want to you can click on this focal point here and then that means you can focus on specific points on the image so if I really want to sort of focus on something in the distance I can and then I can sort of fiddle around with um, the depth of field quite quite dramatically. Now, if I do want to, I can kind of move around, um, just sort of set up a few more views. So let's go up a bit higher and do more of an aerial view. And that looks pretty nice. So we'll create image. It looks a bit unnatural now though, because of the perspective correction. Okay, so I'm just gonna turn that off for this particular view. And you can see for those kind of views, uh, perspective correction looks a bit weird. Looks much nicer to turn those off as well. I don't really need the depth of field on either at this stage. And I think I'll go for a slightly wider field of view just to kind of capture a bit more. Okay, so for me, this is absolutely one of the absolute beauties of twin motion. You know, you can whiz around your model. Um, not only can you view it in lots of different ways, but you can kind of create a whole series of images in absolutely no time at all. So if you'd like to click to eye level, you just click M on the keyboard, and that would basically take you down into what they call pedestrian mode. So that means that you can then walk along. However, you will hear footsteps and you will notice you also crash into things. Um, so it will kind of block you. So I'm blocked up there now, so I have to kind of move around it. So that's actually quite realistic in terms of sort of looking at things like um, pedestrian paths and things like that. So that's a nice little view as well. So I'll just have that. Touch on a little bit of lighting. So for this, what I'm gonna do is click uh, duplicate image. I'm gonna duplicate the one that I'm actually working in, this one. And I'm gonna rename it, let's call this uh, Night Shot. And we're going to basically click more. First thing we're gonna do is change the time of day. So I love this about Twin Motion that you can do these wonderful sort of shadow studies. Um, you can see the moon coming out here, looks really nice. And the stars will come out at different times of the day. So that's actually fantastic. I just think that looks nice with a little bit of moonlight there on the water. But the rest of the image does look a bit dark at the moment. So what we'll do, um, we'll pop that panel away and we'll have a look at lighting. So we'll get our lights panel from the side here and we're just gonna drag in a few lights. So we'll start with the spotlight, I think. You can see as soon as I drag the spotlight into the image, uh, there it is, it's sort of positioned. And I've got all the control that I might need in terms of lumens and intensity can dim that down. I can put shadows on and off. Just be warned that if you put shadows on, um, that will kind of make the image a bit slower to render. So just be a bit careful with that. Let's hold shift down and sort of duplicate that spotlight there. So you can see it's very easy to do in terms of sort of just duplicating where you would like. Um, and basically this will have a nice effect on the image. I can also drag in sort of pools of light using the Omni light. And that's quite a nice little tip as well. So this will just give me sort of pools of light spaced out where I would like them. And we just need a few of those just to kind of make the image a bit brighter. And I think I'll give that a much bigger radius just to sort of brighten it up a little bit. So you can see literally we've gone from a daytime image uh, with the lights on. Now all I need to do to turn those lights off is go to my folder here and a good little tip, as I've said before, just create a container for those. Let's do that and just pop those lights in there. For this particular image, I can turn those daytime lights off and just refresh. For the nighttime image, of course, I can turn them on. And if I don't want to see them, um, I can click the G key. G key will show me the lights or hide the lights. So it's useful, obviously, when you're working to actually see them. And then you can actually kind of position them where you would like them. Now the nice thing about the lights is you'll notice I'm working quite a long way away so let's zoom in a bit more there. Just put a few more here. I can basically adjust them all in one go. Because those are all instances that means all of them are basically controllable in one go. And I can change the sort of things like the coloration and the intensity of those lights as well. So I think what we'll do is we'll type in like 50 lumens, we'll give it a nice broad angle to get a bit more light into the image. So really, really nice, uh, the lighting. You can see it makes a big, big difference on things like the night shots. And with a bit more time, I could sort of really work this out, perhaps put some lights inside the building. So I've done a little bit more work on the model and added a bit more lighting. So let's have a look at this next stage. And I just want to review the images before I render these out. So what I'm gonna do is just pop these panels away and go virtually full screen. And we can see we've got a bunch of images here that I can review. So what I've done here is quite nice. I've set up a couple of day shots and night shots, 
which is really easy to do, as I've shown you. And you can also, uh, just while we're previewing, just pop the preferences open and just go up into ultra quality. Now, you know, the frame rate may slow a little bit uh, when we're in ultra, but as I say, for still images, it really doesn't matter. It's only when you're moving around. Even then, it's absolutely fine, to be honest. So here we go. We've got all our daytime images and a nighttime version for each one, just for fun, just to show you how flexible Twin Motion is. I really like that image. That's a, a lovely one. If I click G, by the way, the lights will disappear as well. Daytime river and river nighttime as well. Look at that, absolutely gorgeous. All these lovely reflections, a bit of life in the image and the city in the background as well. Okay, so um, let's render these images out. All we need to do is go to the export tab, click onto the images here. I can select all of them in one go or just uh, whichever ones I would like to render. When I'm ready, I'll just click start export. Just create a little folder. Let's have a new folder. Let's just call that new and I'll click select. Now, one of the absolute beauties of Twinmotion is the speed of the rendering. Good, okay, so you can see the image is almost done. It's only gonna take a couple of minutes for, I think, um, eight 4K renderings, some daytime and some nighttime renders. And the beauty is you can easily go off and do another task, you know, do some emailing, do some, go back to Vectorworks, do a bit more work. In fact, you know, what's amazing is, um, really the performance is pretty much unaffected, even though in the background, my little computer is rendering away. Now, if I move over the processing here, it gives you a bit of a clue to what's actually going on behind the scenes. Um, so at the moment you can see the CPU is really not doing anything at all, hardly. My first four cores are, are doing a bit of work, but the rest aren't at all. So that's the CPU, but the GPU is pretty much maxing out. So that's all basically down to twin motion running in the background. The GPU is the key thing for twin motion. Okay, so let's have a quick review of those rendered images. Now, these look absolutely awesome. When Twin Motion does the final renders, it renders it beyond ultra quality. So they're always a nice, pleasant surprise. They're better than the actual ultra quality previews. So I think the stills look great. Let's have a look at some video. Now, of course, Twin Motion is amazing for video. So all we need to do, go to the video, click our first frame, and then basically I'm just gonna pan across and do a nice little straightforward pan across. Uh, let's go to about that position there and click another keyframe. So as a minimum, all we really need to create a lovely animation is a couple of keyframes. You can see I've just created two there, which is nice. And basically it will interpolate between those views. Now, if you want to slow it down, all you need to do is add a bit more time in there. So let's say 20 seconds, rewind and play again. So the real beauty is you can kind of keep adjusting things in real time. Uh, you can change things like the lighting as well, but it's so easy to set up and preview. So the real beauty of the new direct link is that we can now pop back to Vectorworks, do a little bit more modeling, make some design changes, which of course is something that always happens in the architectural process, then pop back to twin motion. And what I'm gonna do is just go to plan, use my double click my wand tool and select by symbol name. Let's click onto that symbol there for these chairs, click replace. And basically I'm just gonna load in um, a new one that I want to replace with. Here we go, I've just loaded that one in. I'm just gonna swap out these tables and chairs. So we'll click okay, that will swap them out. So let's have a quick look at the view now. You can see a little bit different, but a bit more contemporary perhaps. Okay, so what we'll do when we're ready, all we need to do is basically click a single button, which is the Datasmith direct link and click the direct link synchronize. Now that will re-export the model um, and overwrite essentially the original uh, export that we did. And then what we'll be able to do is just import that back into Twin Motion very, very quickly. So depending on the size of the model, it can take a few seconds, but it's no big deal. You can do other work while it's waiting. It's already sent, look. And if I go to Twin Motion, um, you'll notice that it's already <laughs> done the change, actually. The, the bollards have disappeared are so fast. The new seats have come in. And you know, that's how fast it is to make these changes. So let's just quit out of the media mode. Let's just slide back up into the daytime, get a bit more light coming in. I can go onto my materials and start to sort of really kind of polish up those tables. Wow, that's pretty shiny. I can also do really cool things like this if I want to. Let's take this lady here and let's have a sitting and I can just pop her sat on that chair there and so on. Let's pop him down sitting over here. 
So yeah, it's really, really nice. Um, this connection between twin motion and VectorWorks just means we can basically have twin motion running on our main screen and VectorWorks on our other screen. And we can just be updating back and forward between the two, almost like they're one piece of software. So let's review one of the videos that we've produced. You can see here it is in 4K quality, only took a few minutes to render. Uh, we're able to change the lighting as we go through. We've got the animated people. When it gets dark, things like the lights come on and it looks absolutely stunning. So this is what Twinmotion is all about. It's absolutely gorgeous quality rendering for still images, uh, particularly for animations and the ability to just bring life to your rendering. It really does revolutionize your rendering. And that leads me on quite nicely to something that I just want to show you that I've been working on for quite some time. It's a very exciting project. And let's just have a quick look at my new book. Revolutionize your rendering with Twin Motion is completed and will be available for sale, both in EPUB, PDF, and also hardback very shortly. It's a really nice book. It talks about the kind of background of Twin Motion. There's lots of really nice sort of sections in it as well. Um, all sorts of things you can pick up there. It's actually a really big book, it's about 300 pages. So if you're interested, let me know and um, you can kind of snap up a copy of that. One of the lovely things about it is we've got some really nice featured firms and you can see some of the case studies of some amazing firms doing work like Flansburg Architects, a uh, wonderful firm using Vectorworks and Twinmotion as well. So this section of the webinar you can see has been made on my Mac with my M1 Pro. But the next section, what we're gonna do is switch over to my PC and we're gonna be looking at the 2022.1 release that has just come out recently. 